Okay, I'm back. And the docuseries on R. Kelly, it ended. <sighs> yeah, that was really intense. But it brought up a lot of issues that I had, you know, growing up, being 14 years old and being raped. And I've told my story before and I'll tell it again and I'll dedicate this just to that because in the past I would kind of throw it in you know if I was talking about something else and it seems like a good time for that and this is why I could relate to these women on so many levels and this is also why they spoke out and it was to help others like myself kind of work through it because they've all come through it on top they're doing great I feel like they all have you know husbands, kids, careers, and they help other people. And it's just a really good thing to see that. And, you know, they can inspire a lot of people. Okay. So when I was 14 years old, my mom had already been gone for a few years. She, this is weird. She had already been kind of mentally gone anyways, you know, and never at home. She was always off with my sister who was older than me. So when my sister turned 18, my mom, she, well, she talked my mother into leaving me. This is a sister that faked her own death and faked terminal illness for 10 years and all this and kidnapped my father and all this crazy shit. So, and she admitted to me that she talked my mom into leaving and she brought my mom to bars and my mom cheated on my dad all the time. My sister had a lot of shit on my mom. And so my dad would kind of let her get away with things, you know, because she wouldn't tell him what was really going on with my mom. And it's just as crazy. It, that's too much. So I'm not going to talk about that. Let's talk about the rape. Okay, so she was already gone. I didn't really have an older sister or a mom. My other sister was raising two kids. But at that time, I think she still only had one. But she was just so busy. She was raising a kid on her own, single mom. So she was working all the time. And I didn't have my relatives around, you know, aunts and uncles and cousins and what have you, because they were all back east. And we moved out here, you know, to California. And I think that would have been, made a huge difference if I just would have had access to relatives because I was all alone out here. And so I just was able to do whatever the fuck I wanted. Basically, my dad didn't care. He wasn't around. It wasn't like he didn't love me, but I don't think he knew how to be a parent. And one day, oh, sorry, something was on my eye. My friend came over, my best friend at that time, uh, came over to hang out. And we were in the back. Uh, There's kind of a side yard. And it had a camper. An old school camper from like the 70s or whatever. I mean, it was, it was a cool old camper. And I didn't want to like mess up the house. And I didn't, I didn't know when he was coming home. I didn't know if my sister was going to come over to do laundry. I didn't know. But Mandy had brought some alcohol. She brought some beers over. I think it was like a six pack. It was no big freaking deal. And the house was big. I lived, I grew up in this really big, beautiful home that was empty, you know, that had no love or attention or family, you know, it was just me and my dad and he was never home. And my sister would show up on occasion just to, like I said, do laundry or whatever. But like, if I had a little sister, you know, if I went to my, you know, my, my house to do laundry and I saw her there alone, I would take her ass home. I'd be like, get in the car. You're going to babysit your niece and I'm going to feed you whatever. So the fact that nobody really came to my aid, it just really still bothers me. All right. So we were in the back in the camper and I had gotten a phone call earlier that there was a party up the hill at this. She's an older girl. She was like a year or two older than us and popular and lived in a mansion on a hill. There was like different parts in my, t I think every town has it. 
there's like the super rich that are on the top of the hill. I was like in the middle on the, you know, like there's the big hill. And then there I was. And then the people that didn't have any money were on the ground, like just flat, you know, and it's just how it always is. I feel like in every single town, you know, even in LA, it's like Hollywood Hills and then you're in the Valley, you know, it's all right. So we weren't super rich, but we were definitely upper middle class, you know, up on the, we were on a hill, but just not on the hill. So this girl had a party. It was raging. <laughs> you know, everybody was going and we were nervous, me and Mandy. We were like, oh my God, this, you know, we're, we're young. We're 14. All of these girls were like 16, 17, what have you. And I knew so many of them because my neighbor was one of them. My neighbor that night, okay, so we ended up drinking a few beers so to warm up for the night. And we were having these guys pick us up in a truck. I don't even know what, who they were. I don't remember. <laughs> All I know is we were getting a ride up the hill. And um, the, the truck pulls up and honks, you know, and it was probably around seven or eight or something. I can't remember. But she had been there all day with me. We've been hanging out and laughing and partying and gossiping or whatever, listening to music, doing our makeup, you know, whatever. And we had, we didn't drink that much. We had a few beers maybe. And so the, the truck honks in front of my house and me and her run out there and I'm dressed normal, just not slutty. We're in, we're in a tank top. I think it was, you know, hot out. A tank top, shorts, and just some sneakers. I mean, it was nothing. I wasn't wearing pumps and a low-cut shirt. I had no boobs yet. None. Seriously, they were mosquito bites. I didn't even develop boobs until I was like 18. No joke. No, I think I was like 17. Yeah. It was 17 that came out of nowhere. Okay, yeah. And I had a lot of baby fat. But at that time, I was really super skinny, tiny. No boobs, no pubes, nothing. No body, really. It's like a little 12 year old boy's body. And my neighbor who is, was friends with all of those people. And the reason why I kind of knew all, all of the older people ran outside. We, we jumped in the back of a truck, by the way. And it was, you know, that they don't allow that now. I don't think, but back in the day, you could jump in the back of a pickup truck and you're like, Ooh, let's go, what? you know? And she comes running outside and I'm in the back of this truck and she's like, get out. I was like, what do, we, what do you mean get out? She's like, you, sh you shouldn't go. I have a bad feeling you shouldn't go. I said, what do you mean? Oh my God, you're not going to go? I thought you're friends with her, the girl that was having the party. She's like, I can't go. I got in trouble. I got restricted. She accidentally ran her parents' car into the garage and she didn't have her license. And so she was already in trouble and she's like, you, just don't, you shouldn't go, you shouldn't go, get out. And I'm like, I'm not getting out. You're not my parent, get out, you know, go on. You know, it was weird. She had like a premonition. It was so weird because later we talked about it. Okay. So we go up to the party. I blew off my, you know, my friend, my neighbor who I've been friends with ever since we moved there. We're really good friends. And we get to this party. It's around a pool. We're having a good time. <sighs> talking, dancing. I had another beer. Somebody gave it to me. No big deal. At that point, I had only been drunk maybe once when I was 13 and it was off um, red wine. <laughs> and I knew I'm like, I'm never doing that again. That was crap. Threw up all over myself. It was gross. And I had to take a train the next day. So it was even worse. You know, you're hung over on a train and you're like 13. And so, um, yeah, we we're just hanging out, I'm talking to everyone. It was so much fun. And Mandy had a curfew. And she said, oh, you know what? We, I need to get home. You know, it's getting late. And she seemed to be like swaying. Like we both were like suddenly really drunk out of nowhere. I think I'm pretty sure we got roofied. I'm just convinced. There was these guys hanging around the party that... We had seen at school and that everyone kind of knew they really didn't speak English that well. Uh, one was from Guatem Guatemala, I think, or I can't remember. I always thought he was just from Mexico and 
he might have been like first generation or what have you. And I have nothing, like I said, I have nothing against anyone from any country. I don't judge people like that. So, yeah, I kind of like thought they were cool, him and his friends, Javier and Jesus. I'm saying it. I'm saying their names. Javier and Jesus. So we were both feeling really drunk out of nowhere. And those guys were hanging around. And so we started heading to the front of the house to try to find someone to give us a ride home down the hill. And um, we, we the, the person that drove us there wasn't around. And nobody wanted to leave the party. It was just getting started. And I think it was probably around 10 o'clock. I think that her curfew was like 10 or 11. Might have been 11. I don't even remember because, like I said, I think we got roofied. We didn't even drink that much, and we knew better. We just would drink sips here and there, but we were never, like, beer-bonging, you know? Maybe later, you know, I think I remember there was times that things like that happened, but I, I don't, I'd never allowed myself to get drunk like that again to that on that level of, like, where I couldn't walk. It's such a long story. Okay, so... Because I did, that did happen to me in my twenties as well. Again, I think I got roofied. I think men prey on people like me, and those those young girls. Are Kelly preyed on them? I was young and naive, happy go lucky, just still sparkling. The eyes were so sparkling. I was so excited about life, even though I had no mom and my dad wasn't really there, and I had no family. For some reason, I still thought everything was going to be okay. You know. And I was still really innocent. I didn't really hang around bad people. You know, I felt like that my friends were all, you know, decent human beings. And, you know, it's, yeah. So these two guys were like, oh, we'll, we'll give you a ride. And me and Mandy were like, okay, cool, whatever. You know, it's just down the hill. It's, it really was literally just down the hill. And so we get in this little two, two door car. You know, it's four seats, but there's only two doors. And so basically they would have all the control of who got in and who got out, especially if they push the seats back. But I wasn't even thinking. I was just like, let's just go home, you know, and you have to get home. Her mom was supposed to pick her up, I think, at t you know, I think it was like 11. I'm just going to say 11. And when we drive up, my dad was home and I saw him on the balcony. I was like, oh, there's my dad. Cool. These motherfuckers were so brazen that I tried to open my door to get out. I was on the left side, the passenger behind the passenger side, which was my rapist side. I tried to get out. He kept shutting. He wouldn't. First off, he wouldn't open the door. He just. And then when he did, and that was only to help his friend carry my friend to the front lawn of my house, which was right there on the cul-de-sac. It was like a little curve. Dump her out on my front lawn in front of my father, who was on the balcony, and take off with me. Basically kidnap me. Yeah, I couldn't get out. I kept trying. And then I tried to go around to the other side, and the door was slammed. And I started kind of freaking out. I was starting getting really upset, and... <sighs> Just gonna breathe okay so honestly I don't know where they drove me back then uh, the town that I lived in wasn't really developed like it is now and so there was a lot of places to go and just park they drove me to an empty area where nobody was that's all I know and I didn't know what was happening I was crying you know, because I was really drunk and I didn't know how I even got that drunk. I was crying and I got attacked. The The guy in the front that was driving climbed over the seat to me and held me down and um, ripped off my clothes and had his hand around my neck. And I was a virgin, so I I felt it. I get hurt and I was saying ow ow stop stop crying hysterically saying no stop and um I uh, you know I kept looking over at his friend who was sitting in the front seat 
And his friend kind of looked back at me and then turned around again. And I said, hey, help, hey. And I was crying so hard that I was like shaking. And um, and I, was, I remember being in a lot of pain because he was holding my neck and holding my legs down with his legs. And, um, and then out of nowhere, he stopped and um, he asked his friend if he wanted in Spanish, they were talking back and forth, you know, in Spanish. And he's like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know Spanish. I know very little Spanish. And, um, he was asking him if he wanted to go. And the guy goes, Oh, da, 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 da. you know, and he turned around and tried to like, and then I blacked out. That's all I remember. And then I woke up you know, in my bed and my shorts were on backwards. Um, I had a tank top on still and my underwear were gone. And I asked Mandy for some reason was there. She, her mom didn't pick her up, I guess, or she called her mom because my dad had to bring her in from the lawn. He carried her inside, put her in my room. And, um, and I said, what happened last night? She goes, I don't know. I woke up in your room. And um, there was bruises all over me, on my neck, on my legs. Um, there was blood on my sheets because I was a virgin. And it was like... <sighs> so... <sighs> at school that Monday, me and Mandy got dropped off at a friend of ours house that knew those guys. And she goes... We used to get drop off there because she lived near the school. And sometimes my dad had to get to work early, actually all of the time. And so she, I'm um, sorry, just reliving. I still have flashbacks. I still have PTSD to this day. So we were dropped off at her house, Tammy's house. And she's like, oh yeah, someone said Juan said that uh, you, you slept with both of them. Uh, that this weekend and blah 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 I said what I said no why would you no I never I didn't sleep with them I said I was raped I said by Juan you know I said um I the other one I didn't he, I don't know if he raped me I don't think he did he looked really upset he did legitimately he looked upset he was like he looked scared and he didn't want to like he didn't want to do it so but after I blacked out who knows what happened I have no idea, you know, um, <laughs> okay, so my friend, my so-called friend was kind of accusing me of like sleeping with two guys, I, like, I'm a virgin girl, you, I won't sleep with anybody, I didn't sleep with the guy you tried to set me up with, I don't sleep around, you should know that about me, you, you know me, why, why would she, well, why did they say that, I said, because they, he raped me. I said, he wants to like make it look like I just slept with him. I said, it didn't happen like that. And she goes, how do you know you're raped? I said, I still have the bruises. You know, I had to defend myself. I shouldn't have had to do that. And this is someone who has a child now, a daughter, a beautiful daughter. You, what if that happened to her daughter? And I tried talking to her about it on Facebook and she didn't really, wasn't receptive, you know? You know, I think she knows like, so we all go to school and I thought I was trying to be strong. I didn't tell anybody else, you know, nobody else really knew. And I was like, I'm just going to be strong. I'm going to just act like it didn't happen. Just pretend it didn't happen because I was so, you know, out of it anyways. And the bruises will heal. I didn't even think to go to the police. I don't know why. I wasn't raised that way. I don't think there was no one in my life that would have been like, if anything happens, let me know and we'll call, we'll go get a rape kit, whatever. That never happened. So I was in the hall, I was walking in the halls on the first day back to school. I think the party was on a Saturday and then it was like a Monday. And Jesus and Jaime walked by me and Jesus pulls my panties out of his pocket and taunts me with them, smiling at me, laughing at me. And... I was horrified. I was um, re-traumatized, you know, 
because I was trying to pretend it didn't happen. And here he is with my underwear. And I just shook my head and I thought, why did you do that? Like, I was going to write it off as him being drunk, too. Like, okay, it was one of those nights that he doesn't remember either maybe be raping me. Like, but to get joy out of hurting someone. He was laughing while I was crying. He was holding me down and laughing and speaking Spanish to his friend and trying to get him to, like, come over and get me, too. What kind of person does that? What kind of sick bastard does that and then taunts you with your own underwear? I was like shocked. And so, um, I just started withdrawing a lot. Uh, lunchtime came and I went, I didn't even want to eat. And I hid behind near where the shop, uh, wood shop was. And I was actually taking wood shop because I wanted to be able to make tables and, you know, shelves or whatever. I don't know. I just thought it would be cool to take wood shop. And so I would just sit by there, back there by myself and hide and eventually I just told my I wanted to leave I wanted to get out of town and he kept doing it every single day he knew exactly where my classes were and um, he would walk by me every single day and taunt me with my own underwear and mouth something that I don't even know what he was saying it was like threatening you know and then um, I was de desperate. I was desperate to leave town. I'd never wanted to go back to school. I was just so traumatized. And so I said, Dad, I, I want to go live with my aunts. Or I want to go live with Grandpa. You know, I want to go back to Philly. I, we, let's go back to Philly, Dad. And he says, no, I have a job here. He goes, you don't want to go back there. It snows during the winter. I said, I don't care. I just want to go back. I want to be with family. He says, no, we can't do that. I said, let me go live with grandpa then. Let me go. You can stay here and I'll just go. He goes, I don't want to, I don't want my, my dad knowing how bad it has gotten here. I don't want him to know about your mother and how she's taking money and blah, blah, blah. My mom, my dad was paying her basically all kinds of money. He bought her a brand new car when she should have been paying child support. And she never really let me go stay at her house or her apartment, whatever. It was just fucked up. And my dad didn't want my grandfather to know. And so, um, that was, a, that wasn't an option. And so in a magazine, I saw that I could be an exchange student or I could go to, um, this school in Switzerland, you know, I thought, oh, I could go here. I could go to Switzerland. That would be so awesome, you know, and it cost money. And I know my dad had it. I know my grandpa did. My grandfather, my grandfather was a millionaire. He was like upper class Philly, you know, socialite type of thing. It's crazy. I could show pictures and articles about it. And, um, he's like, I don't want him to know. I'm not going to ask him for money. I said, dad, I need to leave. I, I want to go somewhere. I, I can't live like this anymore. And he knew exactly what happened to me, but he didn't say anything. You know, he never... God, if somebody took off with my child, I would be get, jumping in my car and chasing them down. I would have been getting license plates. I, I don't know how he allowed that to happen. Right in front of him, you know? It's, it's one thing that, it was a major problem I had with my father. You know, it was something that um, put a wedge between us. And it's because I couldn't imagine if I had children and I think that's one of the main reasons I didn't have them. I couldn't protect them from this world. There's so many horrible people out there and so many horrible things that happen and I couldn't protect them. And so finally, I find out that in San Diego, there's this performing arts high school. It doesn't cost any money to go to. You have to just pay for like your, um, I'm getting really upset. Um, Yeah. You have to pay for like your ballet slippers and um your jazz shoes and um little outfits, your little your outfits that you have to wear for class. And so my dad found out that my aunt, who's a teacher, 
was moving from Philly to go there. And my dad kept so many secrets. I didn't even know he had a twin sister. I had no idea that he had a sister because my mom and my, uh, she, her didn't get along. That's a whole other story. And so I went to go live there. I rented a room. I didn't even know who she was. I didn't even know her. It's crazy. She was a stranger to me completely, but we became really close, you know, at that time. That's when I lived with the ghost. I think I t told that story about him. So I lived with her and my cousin and his son and his um, baby mama. And I never told them. I never talked about the rape. I just went to school every day. I wandered around San Diego, took buses, and I went on auditions. And I had dance class two hours every single morning, every single morning, five days a week. So I forgot. I didn't forget it. I just allowed myself to let it go, you know, to move on. I didn't have any boyfriends. I didn't have, I didn't, I didn't date. I didn't have sex, nothing the whole in high school. Once I moved away, I was like, I'm, it's over. And nobody really knows why I moved away. I didn't even know at that time that's why I was doing it. I was trying to be so strong, you know, and so brave. Like, oh, fuck them. I don't care. You know, nobody cares about them anyways. But lately it's been coming up, not only because I watched this documentary, but on Facebook, there's people that are friends with him that are on my friend list. And so I decided, well, during the Me Too movement, I came out about him and I said his name. I basically like tagged him in the post, even though he wasn't on my friend list and he wouldn't see it, but I knew somebody else would. And then I wrote to him and I wrote to Jaime and Jesus. I wrote to both of them and I just, I just wanted them to acknowledge what they did. At least if the other one didn't do it, which I still don't know. I wanted him to acknowledge that it happened and that he's, he should have stopped it. You know, that he didn't, he looked like he wanted to. I wanted the other one, the rapist to apologize, to say, I'm sorry, I did that to you. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm married with three daughters. Like he is, he's legit, he's married with three kids, daughters that have kids of their own now. I think they do. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I just saw a baby and I thought I doubt he had, um, <sighs> nothing. Never responded. Of course not. Why would they? And, uh, I thought about because he kidnapped me. I know the statute of limitation on rape ha is beyond like it's over, but on kidnapping, you know, I could have still gotten him on that. And so I talked about it with you know, Mandy about maybe going after him like that. I just, then I thought, I just need to move on. There's nothing I could do. And who else did he do this to though? So I remembered that this one girl went to a dance with him and then she disappeared and didn't go back to school. So I was thinking, all right, well, that's, there you go. There's somebody else. You know, I looked for her online. I couldn't find her. But then I, you know, I went to my friend list and I was looking at all the people I went to school with and I started contacting them. This was during the Me Too movement and saying, this guy raped me and you're friends with him on Facebook. And I know you don't know that he did this, but he did. And most of them unfriended him, but I was looking at it today and I noticed that there were still at least five people that still had him on their friend list. And I just thought they saw my post. I know they did. If they didn't see my post, they got my email, my not email, my text. So why would I want to be friends with somebody that would be okay with this and still have him on the friend list? And it's funny because he wasn't really good friends with any of them. Like I said, they were way older. They were not way when you're in high school, everything's like huge. I think they were like juniors or seniors when we were freshmen. So, um, and they couldn't, like I said, they barely spoke English. And so it wasn't like they had a solid friendship with any of them. 
But the people I did tell and the people I still talk to unfriended them or were horrified. And then my neighbor was like, oh, my God, I had this feeling. It was so weird. I just ran outside and I just needed to get you out of that truck. And so we had that conversation. It's like she knew. It's... <sighs> She knew something bad was going to happen. And she knew how young and naive I was. And, um, all right. So that's my story. I hope it helps somebody out there to know that, um, this happened to me as well. And, you know, I'm still traumatized, obviously. It doesn't go away. It's not going to. Some of the girls had mentioned that in the documentary, the R. Kelly documentary, they were saying, this is something I have to live with for the rest of my life. It's not just, you don't just snap out of it. You don't just forget. I think about it almost every day. And it's true. Every day, um, it, in some, some way, shape, or form, it comes up. And this these guys, they got to go on with their lives. And the rapists got to go have kids and a wife and possibly a grandchild. You know, and I was too afraid to do any of I got married once. Well, it's a long story the I don't even want to go there but um I was afraid to have kids not only because I was abandoned by my mother and I thought oh god what if I have those same instincts that she does just to leave or what if my kid's sick and I can't help him what if my kid gets raped I was so what if he you know where would I what if this what if that what if what if what if and um when you get violated at such young age or what have you and I was molested as a child as well I think that I just couldn't do it I couldn't even I couldn't risk it even though the chances you know what are the chances so I'm, I think it's so brave when people do have kids and they're such good parents and they protect their kids you know and I feel like my dad didn't protect me that night he sh he his patio was right over the stairs, you know, the inside stairs, this big staircase. And it was like the patio was right there. He could have very easily ran down the stairs and at least got like an, uh, a license plate number or gotten in his car, you know, just, I don't know. It's, I guess it wasn't meant to be, you know, it's what ifs again. What if he did? What if he chased them down? I don't know. He apologized for it. We worked through it, but I'm it's still there. You know, it's still there that my parents didn't protect me. And the fact that my mother never said anything happens with you, call me. I'm always here for you. I'm always your mom. My, I'm always your mother. She never did that. I never thought for one minute that I could ever call her for anything. And she was out partying with my sister, you know, and then she finally met some guy that had four kids thinking, how could you go off and marry someone that has four kids when you couldn't even take care of me? And I was a good kid. I, you know, it, yeah, I went out to a party, but I had no one looking after me. I always listened. I was always quiet and respectful. I never was, you know, fuck you, mom. I never did any of that. And then she complained about her new stepdaughter being a total nightmare and how good I was. I'm like, why would you, whatever. So that's a whole other freaking story. But I wanted to talk about my connection my feelings towards, um, the R. Kelly situation and, uh, all right. So this is my story and I'm in bed. I have bed head. <laughs> I've been crying and I'm just being real. And I hope, like I said, this helps somebody realize that they're not alone and to not hold it in like I did. That if somebody hurts you, to tell someone right away, don't wait. Uh, even if you're scared, I know it's hard. It's so hard to even think about going to a hospital or calling the cops or, and you're afraid too, because I got intimidated by them taunting me with my underwear. Like I said, it's weird because it was there was Javi, uh, Jesus and Javier. One of them is the one that taunted me, the rapist. The other one kept his head down, just like in the car. 
So it wasn't like they were both taught to me at school. It just, and it wasn't like I think both of them rate me. I don't know if the other one did. I don't think he did. And I acknowledge that in, in the letter I wrote to him. I said, I don't know if you did or not, but you were there and you could have stopped it. But if you did do it, just own it. Just, I was really respectful actually to them. I didn't go off on them. And I even gave them time to respond. And, um, you know, just like with R. Kelly, he doesn't own it. He's not owning it. He doesn't admit to any wrongdoing, even though there's so much evidence against him. The fact that he married Aaliyah at 15 and uh, there's sex tape with a 14 year old where he says, you're 14, you're the best pussy I've had, you know, a 14 year old pussy I've had. Like there's evidence, you know, it, all right, everyone, I'm going to go to bed. I feel better. I cried and told my story this time. This whole thing is just about my story. And yeah, that's it. I should post this picture on here, shouldn't I? I did do it on Facebook. I did. Sue me. I dare you. No, I'm not going to do it. But yeah. All right. Peace out. Thank you for listening. And like I said, tell somebody. Call a hotline. Call the rape hotline. I wish they had those when I, they did have those, but they weren't putting them out there like, you know, like they do now. So maybe I'll put a number down so that, you know, you can call if you've been raped and 